Hey everybody, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. If you recall, in the last snake tutorial, what we did was we got the snake moving so that when you press the arrow keys, it changes direction. Uh, but as you can tell, when you hit yourself, it doesn't do anything. So I think that would be a good place to start off today's tutorial. So I said that in the last one that we would be doing the food and growing the snake in this one. I think it's actually probably a better idea to do the intersection detection first because then we can use the same method for detecting whether we intersect with the food and it will make that part a little bit easier. So without further ado, before we get into this, I want to draw it out first just so that we understand what it means to be intersecting when you have two squares that are intersecting. So let's go and do that real quick. Okay guys, so we want to determine if two squares are intersecting. How do we determine this? Well, we know that our snake is going to be in a grid, so it's always going to be contained within this uh, world grid like this, and the squares are going to be inside one of these tiles. And so say the snake is right here, 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 and then you have the head up here, and the head we know is intersecting here. How do we know that? We know that because we know that these are on the same tile. So how do we know if something is on the same tile? Well, let's figure that out real quick. So the properties that we have with each body piece, we have their X, we have their Y, we have their width, and we have their height. We know this is true if basically the X and the Y's and the width and the height all are on the same tile. So if the left X is here, the right X is here, top Y is here, and the bottom Y is here, then we know that they are on the same tile. So how do we check that? We just say, so if X1 is greater than or equal to X2, so that would be like the red triangle is X2, and the green is X1, and X1 plus, that's a plus, <laughs> the width of the one, so this is the right point, is less than or equal to X2, plus the width of two, then we know that they are on the same X coordinates. So we know that they're in this row. Next, we want to check the Y. So we just want to make sure that it's bounded within this. We just check and see if the Y is greater than this point and the Y is less than this point. So we would say, and Y1 is greater than or equal to Y2 and Y1 plus the width one is less than or equal to y2 plus the width of two. And so if all of these conditions are true, that means that it's bounded between these two points and it's bounded between these two points, which means that it's in this grid tile. And so then we know that they're intersecting. If any of one of these is false, then we know it's not intersecting. For instance, what if x1 was less than x2? So x1 is less than x2. Well, then that means that this x1 is somewhere over here. Well, if it's somewhere over there, we know that the left X must actually be somewhere over here because everything is on this grid. So that makes it easy for us because we know we just have to de determine whether these points are all within the same pattern or not. Okay. And so using this function, we should be able to determine whether they're intersecting. It'll return true if they are and false if they aren't. Let's code that real quick and see it in action. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the snake class and we'll go right below the update function. And we'll add in one more function in here that's called intersecting. So we can call this, and this will be on two rectangles. So we'll say uh, R1 and rectangle R2. So these will be our two rectangles. And then we'll literally just return exactly what we were saying, because that should be all we need to determine whether they're intersecting or not. So we'll say R1.x is greater than or equal to R2.x. And R1.x plus R1.width is less than or equal to r2.x plus r2.width and r1.y is greater than or equal to r2.y and r1.y plus r1.height is less than or equal to r1 r2.y plus r2.height and that should be good enough and we want this return a boolean and this should tell us whether two rectangles are intersecting now let's write one more helper function that will let us know whether the snake is intersecting with itself. So we'll say uh, public boolean uh, intersecting with self. And so basically all we need to do is we need to take the head rectangle. So we will say rectangle head equals, and we know that the head is at the body's head. So we'll just say body head. And this should give us the head. And it says head might not have been initialized. So we will say this 
Oh, we can't call these both head because then we have a name collision. So we'll call this head R for rectangle, and then we'll say body head. That should give us the head. And then we will say uh, for every rectangle inside of the snake. And so we're gonna go and pull this loop that we're doing. So we're literally just gonna copy this because this is the exact thing that we want. We will loop over every single rectangle inside of the snake. And then we're gonna say, um, if i does not equal the head minus one because we don't want to check against the head because that will always return true because it is colliding with itself. The head is on the same square as the head, which makes sense. So then we'll just say, uh, let's go up here and we'll say if intersecting and we say the head rectangle and whatever the current rectangle we are on, then we will return true because then it's intersecting with one of its body pieces. If all of this is false, then we'll just say return false because nothing is intersecting with the head. So we're good. Okay, so this should be all that we need. Let's add this to our update function uh, right up here, right after we move. We'll say if intersecting with self, then we want to change the state. So we'll say window dot get window dot change state and I believe it was zero, should take us back to the state of the main menu. So let's check real quick, double check. Yep, so that should take us back to the main menu. So with all this in place, we should get it. If we intersect with ourselves. we should return back to the main menu. So we go, we turn, and sure enough, as soon as we hit ourselves, we go. And then let's just double check on this, make sure looks like it might be hitting one frame early. So let's go Okay, and then since it's a little bit hard to see what's happening, we'll just change the weight between updates to see, make it run a little bit slower. We'll do like 0 0.2, <clears throat> or I'll try 0 0.3. I think that should be good. There we go, and so it's running a lot slower. <clears throat> and if you notice that it hit exactly when we moved up one, and so I think this is just because we have this intersection test at the bottom. We should do this at the top of the loop instead. So we'll go here. And then let's try that one more time and see if this fixes it. There we go. And then as soon as it runs into itself, it fails. So this is intersection testing with the snake. We're gonna use this same method to determine whether it's hitting food, and then we'll use that to grow the food in the next episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks, see you.